sometimes it can be very difficult to grasp climate change, but one degree makes a big difference and the glaciers can show that difference. One degree is the difference between having a glacier up there where we see it now or having it down halfway the valley. Formed in the last ice age, these vast rivers of ice carved and shaped the landscapes around them. And through natural cycles of snowfall and meltwater, they've sustained communities for centuries. But as global temperatures rise, glaciers around the world are melting faster than ever. It's a phenomenon that's been recorded since the early 1900s. In Switzerland alone, the Alps have lost around half their ice volume. There's no clearer marker of climate change. And as the balance shifts, the mountains themselves are becoming unstable. With its snow-capped peaks and wooden chalets, this alpine region looks like a postcard. But this picture-perfect scene was shattered in May 2025, when a landslide buried an entire village here. Glaciologist Daniel Farinotti is leading a team of experts to collect crucial data in the wake of an event long thought to be exceptionally rare. If we'd been standing on this spot just a month or two ago, the view would have been very different. What was here before? This was one of the pretty untouched valleys in Switzerland. And there was uh, the little village of uh, Blatten, which is uh, as picturesque as the villages get. And yet what we can see now looks like almost a gravel pit. Yes, you may well call it like that. So what we see is the rock ice deposit that uh, generated from the very mountain that you see up there. This came down that way. And because of the fluidity, you can see on that side, it went up and that's a 200 meters elevation gain. And then it basically splashed out on the two sides. We can see and hear a load of activity happening here. What's going on? Well, what the authorities are trying to do is to re-establish a connection to the village. This they literally managed as of yesterday. So there is a road that is connecting the village again. Because what you need to understand is that uh, when the rock ice mixture fall, it would dam the river that we see. And so this ended up flooding the part of the village that didn't got destroyed from the first event. And so what's happening now with all those helicopters flying, uh, that is uh, the military going in and trying to clean up the site. So, you know, there is oil spills, there is houses literally floating around in that lake, and this needs to be kind of re-established. It's hard to grasp the true extent of the landslide without seeing it for yourself. So I joined Professor Farinotti in the air to get a clearer perspective. From this height, you get a bird's eye view of how an entire village could be wiped off the map in a matter of seconds. And I'm lost for words, seeing the devastation. In early May 2025, monitoring teams detected increased movement on the slopes above the Bircher Glacier. With repeated rock falls scattering debris on the surface of the ice, by mid-May, modelling suggested a large-scale collapse could not be ruled out, so a precautionary evacuation of Blatten was ordered. Ten days later, the glacier gave way. Around 10 million cubic metres of rock and ice hurtled down the valley, at speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour. That's as fast as a racing car. It took just 40 seconds to reach the valley floor. The village of Blatten was destroyed, and sadly, a shepherd was killed 
trying to rescue his flock of sheep. The evacuated residents, still reeling from the loss of their homes, gather here to see what remains. Luitgard Verlin has lived in the valley for 30 years. I have no words for that. Je suis euh, encore un petit peu en choc parce que cette arrivée tout d'un coup, euh, peu à peu, euh, ça change. Et puis, euh, c'est toute une autre vallée maintenant. Normalement, on vient dans notre petite vallée, c'est étroit. Et tout d'un coup, c'est un paysage tout à fait différent. The delicate clean-up operation is expected to take years with many buildings still submerged in flood water after the landslide dammed the Lonza River. It's changed for always, because the glaciologues and the geologists have said that we can't change it. It's going to remain like this. It's another valley. I don't have any words for that. It's really incredible. Yes. We now head over 3,000 metres upwards to see where and how it all started. Well, that was quite an experience. Wow. Gosh, man, seeing the, the devastation that that's caused, it's like trees were just like matchsticks. So we'll go down this way and then... Am I following you across? That is quite an epic view. Yeah, isn't it? What is it that we're looking at here? So what you see is the position of the former glacier. You see the position of the former mountain and you clearly see the path it took kind of down the valley. In the days before the collapse, measurements showed the glacier's movement had accelerated to around 10 meters per day, caused by an overload of rockfall debris. And uh, can you hear the sound? Is that water? No, that's not water. Those are the constant rockfall that is still ongoing. And you can see the dust cloud, can you? So that's the rocks impacting. So what looks like smoke almost coming out at the top of the mountain or, or mist is actually the result of rocks falling down. So this is what uh, was going on kind of for, for almost a decade. There you see a bit of more rocks coming down as well. You can see them falling constantly as we're standing Oh yes, there. it's constant. That's really nothing to go for. It sounds like an explosion. It does. Oh, no. Listen, my internal voice right now is saying yeah. everything about being here is not a good idea. And so that would have been what happens anyway, that rocks will constantly fall down here, but just not in the amount that happened when Blatten was, was covered. It's, it's, a, it's a combination. So over years, this was ongoing, um, but that ended up covering the glacier. So protecting it uh, from uh, sunlight, shielding it from melting, and on top, with all the weight that the rocks would put on it, they would squeeze it like a toothpaste. And then came the final kick. There was a slab pushing the glacier from the back and eventually everything went at once. So what was happening is that uh, because there was so much ice involved, when you throw it down a mountain, you have a lot of friction. So kind of you're doing this. And as you would do with your hands, kind of you're generating heat. And so this heat ended up melting the ice and making the entire thing very liquid. If it would have been only rocks, it would have been looking different. If it would have been only ice, it would have been different. It's kind of, it was the perfect storm. Climate change is thawing the permafrost in the Alps, triggering more frequent rockfalls, landslides, and a general destabilization of mountain slopes. While it's impossible to prevent such disasters in the short term, understanding exactly what happened is crucial 
to preparing for the future. So what is it that you and your team are actually doing here? So it's not only me and my team, there's a lot of actors from the private sector, from uh, the government side and also uh, from the science part. And uh, what's ongoing is that uh, there is a lot of monitoring still ongoing. So there is cameras which you can make out of there, for example. To the peak there. Exactly, yeah. There is equipment further down, there is equipment on the other side of the valley. This is still monitoring uh, the mountain. That has two reasons. One is, as you can see, it is still active. So this is for safety reasons and in order to be able to trigger an alarm if necessary. And the other is to learn as much as we possibly can from this event. It is estimated that this happens one every 300 years. So there isn't many chances to learn what we can learn from here. The ultimate goal is well, to make every other place safer. And uh, this is now the snow and ice we are building. If you feel out to the right hand side, this is a uh, glacier. This is covered by dust in front of us too. Although devastating for the people who lost their homes just a few weeks after the collapse, it's essential for Professor Farinotti and the team to capitalise on this rare opportunity. There is basically three things we're going to do. One is uh, geoelectrics, then there is Nicola. Um, he will do geotechnical tests. So I'm working on, on large landslides at SLF in Davos, uh, VSL Institute for Snow and Avalanches. And uh, we have now a lot of large avalanches in the Alps where some rocks, some ice and some snow are involved. But we don't have uh, good models to represent them and to understand what could happen if the slope is stable or not, for how long, when is it going to fail and how far is it going to go. For safety reasons, we aren't allowed to join the team on the debris, but we give Professor Farinotti a camera to record their work. We will be doing, uh, we call it geoelectric measurements. So that's a, a manner by which you can determine the composition of the deposit. In a nutshell, the deposit has three layers. There is one layer in which the ice has melted out, so it's dry, that's very solid. There is one layer which is left with the melt water in it, and that is, you can envision that like a bit of a concrete that has not solidified, so it can flow around. And then there is a third layer in which the ice is still there, and that's reasonably solid too. And so the measurement we'll be doing is telling us where those layers stand. Over there will be electrode 48. 48? Yeah. And number one will be okay. there. Yeah. So, yeah. Electrodes are placed on the landslide surface sending small electrical currents through the ground to measure voltage and map the electrical resistance. This geoelectric method makes it possible to survey large areas quickly and the results can be verified with geotechnical tests. So today we go with a long metallic pole around in the field. It's quite heavy, it's about 15 kilograms. And then we have a kind of hammer on top one person is holding the pole, the other one is hammering down and we count the number of times we have to hammer down until the pole enters the ground. And we do this at multiple intervals along the length of the pole and also multiple places on the deposit so that we understand better the spatial distribution of the soil characteristics and also along the depths of the pole how it's changing. These measurements allow scientists to see what lies beneath the surface, mapping the buried ice, water pathways, and how compact the debris is.
Since analysing the data, the team has revealed that around 30% of the debris cone is made up of ice, some of which has already melted, but much will take years to disappear entirely. Dr Nikola Oostreicher and his colleague Professor Joanne Gom at the Institute for Snow and Avalanche Research, known as SLF, are using the data in another way. This information is very important for the runout models that we are doing. We, we perform some models to better understand when the avalanche is going, how far is it going to go, which places can it reach. Modelling large landslides like this builds a clearer picture of how rock and ice behave as they descend a mountain. Helping areas at risk should a similar collapse happen elsewhere, the likelihood of which is increasing as the Alps warm. Up here to the left, you see a snow patch. You see also what is called the Bergschrund, so this uh, little crack that uh, looks like. So that is a bit where the glacier detaches from the mountain, as you so wish. And uh, you can make out by eye, right, uh, the snow that is uh, very white. For people watching this, listening in France, in Spain, in the UK, further afield in the world, why does what happens here in the Swiss Alps matter to them? Well, this is a representation to what is uh, happening to the rest of the world too. So what we see here is the effect of climate change. Climate change is kind of increasing the rockfall, is retreating the glaciers, it's making the forest migrating upwards, is killing biodiversity. Sometimes it can be very difficult to grasp climate change. If we say that the climate has warmed one degree over a century, one degree doesn't sound very much, if I crank it up at home, for example. But one degree makes a big difference, and the glaciers can show that difference. One degree is the difference between having a glacier up there where we see it now, or having it down halfway the valley. So that's why glaciers are so powerful for demonstrating what's ongoing. The vanishing glaciers of the Swiss Alps reveal the scale of change unfolding across our planet, reshaping the world before our eyes. A stark reminder that the time for action on climate change is now. <laughs>